In this video, we're going to look at the LZX Shape Changer. The Shape Changer is a quadrilateral shape generator. Its primary function is to take incoming ramps and create a variety of interesting shapes which can be animated in a number of ways. There's already a really great introductory video to the Shape Changer that goes over some of its basic functions. In this video, we're going to look at some more unusual uses for the Shape Changer, including using it to process external videos. One of the really great features of Shape Changer is that it has four independent outputs. In this first patch, we'll look at some ways you can use all four of these in concert to create a series of interrelated shapes. I suggest you first go back and watch the Introduction to Shape Changer video, as we will not be covering the basic functions in depth. Let's begin with the most basic Shape Changer patch. So I'm going to take my horizontal and vertical ramps. I'm going to plug those into my navigator. I'll take the navigator outputs into my Shape Changer inputs. I'm going to take my gradient output, and we're just going to view this very quickly. So with this basic setup, we're able to create simple quadrilateral shapes and modulate them using the various features on the Shape Changer, and move them using the various controls on the Navigator. Our gradient output is showing us a combination of the horizontal and vertical ramps coming out of Shape Changer. These of course can also be patched individually. We also have a stencil output. And this gives us a hard-edged key version of the Shape Changer output. Having all four of these outputs available individually allows for some really cool creative patching. So I'm going to switch over to the output from my color chords. The first thing I'm going to do is take my stencil output and take my gradient output and combine them using a simple subtraction. So I'll take the stencil output into my bridge. I'm just using the mixer function here. You could also use a passage for this. And in the subtract input, I'll put my gradient output. And I'm going to take this mixer output into layer one. So what you see here is the gradient subtracting from that stencil. Because the gradient is brightest in the middle, we're getting that dark spot inside. For comparison, if we look just at the gradient output, you get that. And if we look just at the stencil output, you get that. So this is a very cool way to get a sort of edge extraction effect from the Shape Changer. Because it has a nice smooth gradient, we can also use this to drive something like a staircase or the ADC on a fortress to get some different results. Take the divide by one out from a staircase. And there you go. So we're just getting those edges. We can also work with the independent horizontal and vertical ramp outputs. So I'm going to take those and put them into the source and threshold of a keyer. We'll take that key output into layer two of our color chords. And so now by adjusting our threshold and our threshold VC amounts, we can start to get a different variation of the same output. And of course, as I go and modulate the different features on my Shape Changer or on my Navigator, they're all going to work together. And finally, I'm going to take the gradient output and I'm going to multiply it. So I'll plug that back into my negative input on my mixer. I'm going to take another output from that gradient, go to the through input on the channel of the passage, and I'll plug an LFO to my input one, take the output from that channel of passage, and go straight into layer three on my color chords. So now this is giving me a nice background image of the gradient. If I set this pretty low, it's going to just more or less fill in that shape that we see in the middle. Adjust this in a variety of ways. Speed that up, slow it down. And I could start to adjust my color mix to get some different type of effects. So from here, I can start to apply all kinds of modulation. 
So I'll take an LFO into my curve voltage control. Slow that down. And I can add some spin to this shape. You can also start to play with different mirroring options. I can adjust my size. And of course I can change my basic ramp shapes. Pretty cool. And just everything. But the nice thing here is that I have three interrelated layers. And no matter what changes I make on my navigator and my shape changer, they're gonna stay related. So this is a very simple way to get a few image layers from one shape changer. And of course you could add a lot of extra modulation to your various voltage control inputs. You could also experiment with combining these different outputs in a variety of different ways. Don't be afraid to experiment with adding and subtracting the stencil, gradient, horizontal, and vertical ramp outputs. Navigator and shape changer are often used together, but in this patch, we're gonna look at what happens when you reverse the typical order Instead of using Navigator into Shape Changer, we're gonna look at what happens when you use Shape Changer into Navigator. So to begin, I'm gonna take a horizontal and vertical ramp. This time I'm gonna use Diver. But there's no reason you can't use Visual Cortex or any other ramp generator for this patch. I'm gonna take the gradient output so we can see what we're looking at. Reset that down to zero. So we could start to see some basic shapes coming in. For this patch, I'm gonna mirror my ramps. And I'm just gonna play around till I get something that looks a little bit complex. It's good. I'm gonna add a little extra modulation to this. So I'm gonna take an output from my prismatic ray and plug it into the skew voltage control. There we go. Get these ranges set appropriately. So now that we have this basic shape, instead of using the gradient output, I'm gonna take my horizontal and vertical ramps and mix them using a passage. Eventually we're gonna go out to Navigator with this. Navigator does not have a gradient output, so we're gonna to have to combine the horizontal and vertical ramps manually. So now we're seeing basically exactly what we were seeing before. So all we're really doing here with Passage is recreating that gradient output, but using basic horizontal and vertical ramps. So now I'll switch these into the Navigator, and we'll take our horizontal and vertical ramps from Shape Changer and plug them into our Navigator and turn spin off. So immediately you can start to see what Navigator is doing. As I move the rotation control, it's having a sort of wave shaping effect on the output from Shape Changer. And so we're getting this very smooth modulation of the values of the output gradient from Shape Changer. This is a very cool and pretty unique effect. You can also play with the X and Y position. X position won't have a whole lot of effect. Y position acts as more of a fader. We'll keep the spin on, because that's working pretty well. And so this nice black and white pattern is a perfect thing to apply to a colorizer. I'm gonna use the colorizer in Fortress. So I'm gonna plug this output into voltage control of ADC1. I'm gonna make sure everything else is turned down to zero and uh, my program mode is set all switches down. Now, if you don't have a fortress, you could use a mapper for this. You could take various outputs into different channels of color chords, marble index. So it'll really work in pretty much any colorizing workflow that you enjoy. So now, as you can see, we're getting a pretty dynamic effect. And I could adjust the passage output to change how those color ranges are operating. 
we can also start to go back and fine tune some of the controls on our shape changer. And of course on our navigator. We can also add an additional level of modulation by taking the output from the channel of passage and summing it with an LFO. So I'm going to take the output from channel one, put it into the through input on channel two, take an LFO into the input on channel two. That output again is still going to Fortress. Slow that down. And this is just going to give me another level of color modulation before we hit the colorizer. I could take these other LFO outputs that I have on my pendulum and start using them to modulate different aspects of the shape changer. So I can go into my gamma curve. I could go into the size voltage control. So that's going to give me a little bit more dynamic shape. I could change the range of my prismatic ray. Try to get that right in the middle there. And now with my basic patch setup, I can just start cycling through some different options by playing with the controls on the shape changer. So while it's easy to think of the navigator and shape changer duo as a position controller and a shape generator, LZX circuits have many different purposes. Oftentimes, secret functions are hiding behind what's mentioned on the label. You also still have the gradient and stencil outputs which you could use to input into other aspects of your system. So this is a really fun patch that hopefully encourages you to try some more unusual patch techniques. In this last patch, we're gonna look at something even more unusual. We're gonna explore using the shape changer to process an external video feed. And because of the way the analog circuits in the shape changer work, the effect it has on the video feed is not going to be at all what you expect. Controls like size, skew, gamma curve, and aspect ratio no longer really make sense based on their labels. However, that doesn't mean that interesting and unique effects can't be achieved. So here I have an external video playing off the Andor 1 media player. It's fairly abstract, it has a good deal of movement. So I'm going to start by taking that Luma output into the horizontal ramp input of the shape changer. Let's take the horizontal ramp output and see what that looks like. So right now we're not going to see a whole lot until we start to adjust our controls. If we switch between scale and zoom, we'll see a pretty dramatic difference in the effect. So with the zoom setting on, we start to get almost a type of keying effect as we move through the aspect ratio. You'll get kind of a brightness effect over here from your skew control. Your size is going to give you a different sort, sort of brightness curve. And gamma in this mode isn't going to have a whole lot of effect, but if we switch over to scale, you should see it actually adjusting the gamma curve of your image. So that's looking pretty cool. And even though in this case, the shape changer isn't really doing what you would expect, this is still a pretty unique effect. Off the top of my head, I can't think of another module that's able to do this kind of processing to external video. We also still have the vertical input to play with. So let's see what happens if we just take a vertical ramp into that. And now let's switch to our gradient output. Let's start to move through our settings. So we should start to see the vertical ramp become visible. And if we get these settings just right, we start to find the external video interacting with the vertical ramp. Now this is a very cool and exciting effect. So as I adjust the aspect ratio, we go from just seeing the vertical ramp to getting some modulation of that vertical ramp by the video feed. 
We could also, instead of using a vertical ramp, switch over to using a prismatic ray or any other source in your system. We could also use a more complex ramp like the H plus V ramp. I'm going to switch this back to the vertical ramp now. I like the kind of simplicity of that effect. And now we could take this gradient output and start to colorize it. So I'm going to take the output into a staircase. I'm going to take the RGB outs from color cords into the red, green, and blue inputs of my visual cortex. I could take one of these outputs and build myself a foreground layer. I could also take the shape changer horizontal ramp, put that into a second layer. Let's make that blue. And I could take the vertical ramp into a third layer. Or I could also take something slightly less related if I want a little more dynamic result. Maybe the H plus V ramp. And then from here, you could start to experiment with a whole bunch of different stuff. Some of these controls are going to give very drastic results, others less so. And while I'm sure Lars and some other folks could tell you exactly what the shape changer is doing to this external video, I just think it's fun to play around. It's not always important that you actually know what's going on in your patch. As long as you can get the results you're after, everything is good. So if you wanted to add a little bit more dynamism to this patch, you take that ramp, put it into a passage. You could also use a keyer, something like that for this. And add a little LFO in there. And that's going to get us a little bit more movement on those lines. You can also take the output of that and add in a prismatic ray or another image source. Which again, it's just going to help make this feel a little bit less static. You could get really noisy with that. Or sync it back up. And there you go. So there you have a much more unusual way to use your shape changer. We hope you enjoyed this video looking at some of the more atypical ways to use shape changer in different patches. Please leave any questions or ideas for future videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching.